I'll be having very interesting guests who have personal stories to tell to the world. Welcome to MND World Talk Show. Hello there, welcome to MNB World's talk show's new episode. In today's episode, we have a guest who is a social researcher, focuses on policy. Her name is Dajang Alter, and she's consultant and board member of Independent Research Institute of Mongolia. Well, quite education and quite a resume. <laughs> <laughs> so, this show is all about you and your personal life, personal perspective, and we are trying to show off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, so let's start from your childhood. Mm -hmm. You are the youngest, mm -hmm. right? You have two sisters. Mm -hmm. And tell us about your childhood. Were you a spoiled kid? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no? Because the er era I was born into wasn't very favorable, yeah, favorable. Uh, for the for spoiling the kids. Spoiling the kids, I would say. But you know, spoiling <laughs> kid, you can spoil kid in very different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Not just. But padding. my sisters tell me I'm spoiled, so it's oh all yeah, about okay, perspective. You I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you are spoiled. You yes, just don't know it. Maybe. Okay, so tell us mm -hmm. about your childhood. Mm -hmm. How was it? Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in uh, Lambatar. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed my childhood, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of time spent outside playing. Uh, at the time, Olambata had a lot of public spaces, green spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed my childhood, yeah. So mm -hmm. your childhood was spent in the transition yes. time, right? Mm -hmm. From the 1990s, mm -hmm. 1990s. And uh, how would you define your childhood if I ask you to give me three words. Mm -hmm. What um, words would they be? I experienced a lot of changes. Okay, changes, one. Changes. Uh, happiness. Happiness. Of course. And uh, I would say experience. Experience? Experience. Okay. Experiencing different things. Experience in different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Okay, were you uh, a A grade student? Uh, because so from what I see from uh -huh. your resume and uh -huh. all these researches, mm -hmm. I wasn't too bad. You were a nerd? A uh, little bit, yes, I would say. Nerdy kid? Uh -huh. so why did you choose to be a sociologist in the first place? And tell us some background story. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> like I said earlier, in my childhood, I experienced a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean by that is up till at the age of 10 or 9, 11, uh, of course, also it's the age, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see much change happening and everything was nice and happy. Mm -hmm. But starting from when I was around 10, we started seeing all of our public spaces taken mm -hmm. by big businesses mm -hmm. and we saw a lot of uh, big buildings rising up mm -hmm. and our neighbors started moving somewhere, my friends moved away, mm -hmm. so we started losing our friends, our spaces um, and for some reason I felt a lot of anger or stress in the society. Really? A lot as a kid? You, as you a were a kid. teenager and yes. because of these transformation in the society. Yeah, just how people's relationships seem to be changing. I couldn't tell why or what was the reason. Even the number of cars increased, more and more traffic jam came. Mm -hmm. We started s having air pollution. So all of these things started happening mm -hmm. gradually. And uh, of course, there's someone who's living at the core of all these changes. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how 
uh, this could be changed or how and why this happened in the first place. But you asked the question during the change that you wanted to change. Yes. You wanted to change the change. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So critical mentality led you to sociology, I suppose. I suppose, yes. Also, I mm -hmm. studied in uh, Switzerland during my childhood, uh -huh. uh, which also uh, described a lot of changes again, complete mm -hmm. contrast. And uh, I think... How many years did you study that? Uh, three years. Two and a half, three. Uh -huh. So from there, you had some ideas, and when you came back, mm -hmm. you had something to compare the society. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then, there, I did a lot of reading on different social topics, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to my teacher who guided me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so once I came back, I was determined I would be working in social. Uh, kind of sector. I didn't know exactly what. Do you enjoy it? I really you love don't? it. You love it? Yes. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you love what you do and you know that's like life is solved. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. you started working at the IRIM, mm -hmm. uh, Independent Research Institute of Mongolia in 2009 mm -hmm. as a researcher yes. but uh, and you did executive director for a while and now you're a board member and uh, consultant. Uh -huh. So during this time mm -hmm. of your career, mm -hmm. what was the most challenging or most memorable research that you did? Mm. Um, yes, there's a lot of interesting okay, research we did. Yeah. The first thing that comes uh -huh. into my mind is in 2012, we did a really detailed study about uh, track tra uh, coal transporting track drivers in South Gobi. Okay. Uh, at the time, a uh, mining boom was happening. Mm -hmm, Mongolia mm -hmm. had the top oh, yes. GDP growth and everybody mm -hmm. was talking about coal export and how mm -hmm. much uh, money it's giving Mongolia. Mm -hmm. But nobody asked the question, who's behind this this boom and, and drive, mm -hmm. how all this coal are being transported, mm -hmm. and at what cost? Okay. And when we went to the field and studied mm -hmm. truck drivers, local communities, mm -hmm. uh, even women who are working in the service industry there, it was just really really sad. Mm -hmm. Even nowadays, we hear that the truck drivers there are a lot of uh, accidents and deaths happening. They don't have any infrastructure there. Mm -hmm. They're just doing their best mm -hmm. uh, to get some income mm -hmm. away from their homes, no water, nothing there. Mm -hmm. So the types of social issues, they were just mm, unbelievable. And unfortunately, until today, we don't see major change. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, using our research, we try to uh, advocate a lot for uh, making sure there should be a local administration in mm -hmm. that area mm -hmm. that is responsible for at least providing health and police or any kind of basic mm -hmm. uh, state services. So what did you get personally from that research, from doing that research, that experience? Mm -hmm. The one message I got, mm -hmm. of course my uh, profession is about social research, mm -hmm. but the one message I got from that is we really, as an institute and as social researchers, mm -hmm. we need to be very vocal and present in policy decision-making mm -hmm. arena. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. we don't bring out the voice or what's happening in from the social aspect mm -hmm. in Mongolia, mm -hmm. we hear on the news or on uh, parliamentary sessions people talking about numbers, and a uh, number of seats or number of uh, income mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. getting or mm -hmm. losing. Mm -hmm. No one's talking about what's happening to the lives of Mongolian people. Mm -hmm. That's really why... Really like on the ground, people to people, in, in, uh, in relation to like work environment, etc. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got it. Well, uh, but I must say that uh, you researchers, not mm -hmm. only you, but I initiated this um, project the glass wallet mm -hmm. and it really had succeeded mm -hmm. because now we are we have a glass account uh, project you might say but it is 
happening in the mm -hmm. policy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that a little mm -hmm. bit. Yes, Irene was one of the actors among many other mm -hmm. civil society, mm -hmm. uh, including Open Society Forum and mm -hmm. a lot of other NGOs, to uh, uh, promote and advocate for transparency. Mm -hmm. And one example was Glass Account Project, which we piloted at district level, where local government, mm -hmm. citizens, uh, cooperate to disclose their budget. Mm -hmm. We tested it and it was successful and it uh, provided the model for the larger policy mm -hmm. and law legal larger change. Larger frame, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, for I think it, the whole momentum continued for around three or four years mm -hmm. with the support of many different uh, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you were part of it, right? Yes, we, we, were, mm -hmm. we were part of it. Okay. Uh -huh. And now we're trying to work, we're working on uh, making sure this class account law is actually implemented and actually being used mm -hmm. in policy. Out to frame, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, for I think it, the whole momentum continued for around three or four years mm -hmm. with the support of many different uh, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you were part of it, right? Yes, we, we, were, mm -hmm. we were part of it. Okay. Uh -huh. And now we're trying to work, we're working on uh, making sure this class account law is actually implemented and actually being used mm -hmm. in policy. Yes, the Independent Research Institute of Mongolia, Irene, was established in 2008, so uh, soon we're celebrating our 11th anniversary. Um, Many people ask us why independent research, why, what do you do? Uh, to answer briefly, any decision making for a country that wants to develop and that wants to make sure everyone is included in this development, it has to be, ba the decision making has to be based on good quality and professional and independent research. We now live in a country where there's a lot of politicization, uh, we talk about the political parties' ability to make good programs. Uh, so having an independent research is crucial. So is uh, having independent media or any other body. Currently, Irene is working on governance, education, uh, gender, disabilities, mining and environment, community. So we uh, try to make sure that we specialize even further in these key areas. Our researchers, our consultants at all levels are working um, to make an impact in their own sectors. Uh, so this is one area. And another focus area that we'll be working in the future is uh, to make sure that Mongolian development experience is also shared internationally. So we're trying to build the knowledge hub uh, in Mongolia where uh, we include all of our um, research and evidence projects uh, into one key hub or center. Well, we uh, talked about the legalizing stuff, so we, sh we have to mention mm -hmm. Uh, the policy-making environment, which is the government, which is the state. Mm -hmm. But everybody is talking about state or government doing actions, taking actions not based on factual research data or information. Mm -hmm. Everybody is talking about mm -hmm. that. But I think, I mean, what I want to ask is, how long does it take for any government of a developing country mm -hmm. to get uh, to a level where the government uses the, these factual scientific information and researches and make decisions based on these informations. Mm -hmm. I mean, from your background, like how long more do we have to go mm -hmm. as a state? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, looking at other countries' experiences, mm -hmm. it's very varied. Okay. First of all, it depends on the resources they have. Okay. Also, the type of regime 
the specific countries mm -hmm. have. Uh, and I think in Mongolia we have a favorable condition uh, in order that in order for policy to base on research. Why favorable. I say okay. favorable mm -hmm. is uh, because we first of all we have a democratic system yes. uh, which requires uh, our politicians or decision makers to be accountable to the people. Mm -hmm. So although we don't see that much nowadays, as time goes by, as democracy becomes more quality-wise rather than just mm -hmm. electoral or uh, form-wise, mm -hmm. uh, it will have to go towards more uh, substantial democracy. Mm -hmm. So for that, research will be crucial. Mm -hmm. And secondly, just recently we saw a lot of legal changes, mm -hmm. uh, for example, the law and development policy and planning which requires any new plan or policy mm -hmm. law to be based on uh, substantive research. This mm -hmm. is required by the law now. Oh, it is legalized? It is legalized. Well, at least, okay, that's uh, good. So this is also, this the law, uh, the passing of the law itself is a big step for Mongolia. But I have to argue on that. Mm -hmm. Mongolia has pretty good constitution, mm -hmm. pretty good compared to different stuff. Yes. But, and well, you know, mm -hmm. the when we, when we are on the, the making sure the implementation of mm -hmm. the law, mm -hmm. we are lacking. I think it's just my personal opinion. Oh, it's it's not just your personal <laughs> opinion. It's very accurate. It's uh -huh. uh, described by many other research findings. Mm -hmm. But I'm the reason that why I'm quite optimistic is because I believe that for any policy or any major change or social change to mm -hmm. happen, it has to happen step by step. Okay. So we uh, see in the long term, in the last uh, few decades, mm -hmm. relatively uh, uh, improvement, betterment of mm -hmm. this kind of policy environment. Mm -hmm. We're not going backwards, we're going to the right direction. It's not as fast or as easy as we would like it to be, <laughs> but it's there. Okay. And uh, not only the legal environment should be there, but also people doing the research not just individuals, but actual institutes, mm -hmm. professional institutes should mm -hmm. appear like uh, in our case. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, the policy makers start, should start seeing the value in research, why mm -hmm. they should use. How long do you think it will take? Just say number. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you know, uh, recently I, I, I saw this, um, this word well, change your word dream to a goal and mm -hmm. plan and it will happen. So mm -hmm. how long do you think to Mongolia? So nowadays we're setting all of our goals and targets by 2030. Okay. 2030. Well, Mongolia's long-term development vision is mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. up to 2030. So mm -hmm. I hope by 2030, uh, relatively... Relatively, uh, reasonably. <laughs> reasonably. Because <laughs> even nowadays, uh -huh. we don't see any government that's 100% doing everything yeah, yeah, based I mean on research. There's no 100%. Yeah. There's yes. always a uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say 2030. 2030. <laughs> okay, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah. As a person, as a citizen, mm -hmm. what would you like to change mm -hmm. in today's society in Mongolia? Mm -hmm. First of all, um, mm -hmm. Now Mongolia is developing very uh, quickly, mm -hmm. but the largest fear I have is inequality. Okay. So still uh, poverty remains high, almost mm -hmm. 30 percent in Mongolia. So gap in wealth? Uh, gap wealth? in wealth, gap mm -hmm. in uh, access to services, education, mm -hmm. even housing. Mm -hmm. uh, there are gaps in almost every domain of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would really urge social policy and Mongolian people in general to be aware of that mm -hmm. and to support as much as possible some kind of inclusive policies. Mm -hmm. We're a nation of only three million people. Yes. So uh, we should be very um, aware of each other's mm -hmm. uh, challenges, support each other. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing I would really like to change. Mm -hmm. Well, Irene uh, recently did a research on uh, life quality in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. uh, do, I uh, do I say the right term? Life quality? Uh, yes, in a way. In, in, in our society, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. yes. Can you share some interesting facts or numbers like data? You are a researcher. Uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, can you share some interesting facts and data yeah. from that research? Mm -hmm. uh, our research was called the Social Wellbeing Survey of Mongolia, mm -hmm. which we basically measured whether people trust each other, whether okay. people are willing to work, cooperate with each other. Mm -hmm. If so, with whom and with whom they would not. Okay. And the finding, the general finding we had was people were very much favorable towards their own surrounding, which okay. means directly family, friends, mm -hmm. relatives, colleagues. Direct surrounding. Direct surrounding. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, it's common, of course, in any human society, but in Mongolia it was higher than other countries. Okay. But when we ask about whether you would be willing to work, trust a stranger, or mm -hmm. people you don't know, people from different land, different mm -hmm. nationality, mm -hmm. religion, uh, political party, it just the gap becomes really big. There is almost mm -hmm. really low levels of trust, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. kind of explains why many of our social problems are not being solved, because people are happy within their own life. Mm -hmm. In their own homes, they're mm -hmm. fine. But we are in a way isolating ourselves mm -hmm. from the outer world yes in individual way and in, 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 in as a society mm -hmm. at the same time no oh, oh. exactly yes we don't mm -hmm. really see ourselves responsible as part of a social problem changing social uh -huh. problem we don't see ourselves even if we see ourselves responsible we don't take actions we are pretty individual based or mm -hmm. family based there comes structure. the nomad lifestyle, no? <laughs> 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 well, I, 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 meant to, I, I meant to ask you this, mm -hmm. because you are doing this research and we mm -hmm. are doing... Uh, Mongolia is a democratic and... Uh, mm -hmm. Democracy w came from the Western society and mm -hmm. Mongolians have nomadic lifestyle, nomadic life, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. there has to be the way of life that differ. Mm -hmm. So I think I think uh, there's some uh, difference or contradiction that okay these nomads mm -hmm. who are living in uh, only learning to live in urban lifestyle mm -hmm. and uh, you know trying to adapt to this li city mm -hmm. lifestyle mm -hmm. or you know how does it show up mm -hmm. from the research mm -hmm. is there that difference yes of course uh -huh. um, uh -huh. democracy anyway has many different forms. Mm -hmm. the social democracy, liberal mm -hmm. democracy, etc. In Mongolia, uh, up till now, of course, we developed a type of democracy that gave taste to people more about uh, freedom or mm -hmm. more about the right to exercise their uh, electoral mm -hmm. decision-making power and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But now, it, uh, I would say it's the first step that's okay. set up, that's good. And now we need to move on to the second step, which is actually about saying that democracy is not just about you alone, mm -hmm. it's about the society. So now let's fix the societal problems together using mm -hmm. democracy as mm -hmm. a tool. Mm -hmm. Through our talk show, we will bring you entertaining personal talks with certain individuals. These individuals will be divided in two categories. Number one is I am Mongolian. In this category, guests will be proud Mongolians who have stories to tell to the world. Number two is I love Mongolia. Through these talks, we will introduce expats and non-Mongolians who are related to Mongolia one way or another. Heartfelt stories of their love affair with Mongolia the land of blue sky.
I started at music and dance college uh, when I was seven till around 12. Um, but since then I haven't been practicing much that as much as I should. But I just enjoy playing it every now and then when I'm alone at home. I don't, I never play in front of other people. Uh, but my friends and classmates are now professional pianists and uh, musicians, so I enjoy see, watching them playing and I often go to the opera uh, to see different classical music concerts, so that's uh, an important part of my life. Well, tell me about the future <laughs> as a <laughs> researcher, as an analyst. Mm -hmm. As a person who works with data and numbers, mm -hmm. mm, what is the future you want? Mm -hmm. So uh, we... Not we, you. Personally? Yes, <laughs> yes okay. Personally, uh, uh -huh. I'm trying to work to make sure Mongolia's development experience uh -huh. is also shared with other countries, developing countries. Uh -huh. And uh, for that, we need people who are there, who share mm -hmm. our stories, who are vocal. Mm -hmm. um, so in the next five years or ten years, I'll mm -hmm. be working mostly on that uh, mm -hmm. goal, uh, hoping that Mongolian researchers and uh, development uh, workers can go abroad and share, start sharing their experiences. S experiences of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, are you proud Mongolian? Of course, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. why? I would say, uh, just like as we were discussing earlier, I'm proud of Mongolia's democracy. Okay. That's very new generation talk. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, we are the uh, generation who are living in, um, mm -hmm. who are taking the advantage of democracy, yeah. really. And mm -hmm. I think this democracy has a lot of potential for especially young people. Mm -hmm. Although the numbers say, young people face a lot of challenges, like unemployment is twice as high among young people compared mm -hmm. to the national average. Mm. Uh, there is still some opportunities, but as we s discussed earlier, we need to make those opportunities available to those who need it, mm -hmm. not just for the few. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I will be working for the rest. Of socialism, socialism try to do it, no? To a certain extent, yes. To a certain extent, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So I guess we have to fuse socialism and democracy with the right amount <laughs> <laughs> and come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> we can I have our Mongolian style democracy Mongolian that's style successful, democracy. that we can share the world, look at our development experiences. We mm -hmm. did it. That's what mm -hmm. I hope to do mm -hmm. in the future. Well, thank you very much for your mm -hmm. very interesting takes mm -hmm. and uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And I wish you good health and good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. This has been Miss Dolgong Alder. And see you with the next episode next week. <laughs>